is up it's me purple news and today we are doing a different kind of a video now i am going to cook <laughs> listen okay disclaimer i can't cook i can't cook to save my life no 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 i can't cook but i kind of got this idea forgot the tiktoker but he does like the cookbooks of american girl and he does kit's studio cookbook here um i cook but yeah so i picked a recipe that i feel like i can do um um it is the roast beef hash recipe now kit is my favorite historical doll she's from the 1930s so you know this is this is gonna be interesting the ingredients so what you're gonna need is salt pepper three medium-sized potatoes i think these are pretty medium-sized i'm the only person who'll eat this i would see i would give some of this to my brother but he's vegetarian so that's gonna be an issue um we got a onion we got the beef the beef this was expensive this eleven dollars damn and i forgot to get a jar of gravy a beef gravy so i just have this packet i always have these packets so unless i have a different no i'm not that smart why why would i why would i buy like a can of gravy i mean it would be smart for this situation but yeah i didn't think about that so but yeah <laughs> you're gonna need to preheat your oven to 350 and sprinkle a salt and pepper on the meat so just just salt and pepper Just salt. You know what? We're not do. <laughs> no, I'm not doing just salt and pepper. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, I'm getting more spices. Like <laughs> salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. I'm gonna add more spices. Oh my god. <laughs> this is called beef chunks. Or beef tenderloin. It says I can substitute it with beef tenderloin. I looked at the recipe. So I am putting some paprika, some onion, some oregano, salt, and pepper onto my thing here. Because, like, I mentioned this in the video, but back then in the 1930s, they only, they, they didn't have money for exotic seasonings. So I seasoned my meat because I didn't want it to be bland. You know, you, you got to doctor up your stuff. That's what I do throughout the video is I doctored up some of my stuff to make it like taste good. Rub, rub it into your meat, you know, tell your meat, your hopes and dreams of um, life. This is what it should look like. Oh my God, it's slipping. Put it in the oven, put the meat in the bacon. An hour and a half? Okay, so. <laughs> okay, I will see you guys in an hour and a half when this oven preheats and need to put this meat in. And then we're going to do the rest of this jazz. Like we're going to potatoes and then onion and then make this gravy. So we're back. There is six minutes left on the timer. So I am just going to start cooking the rest of the items. Okay, so it this the third thing I'm supposed to do is let's see. Peel the potatoes. And cut them into a cube shape and put them in a sauce pan. Oh, editing me is gonna have so much fun with me at you know. Okay, so we got one potato peeled. Okay, we got second potato peeled. Alexa, stop. Okay, we gotta take out the other. We gotta take out the roast. Kind of nervous, low key. Let's get my oven mitts on. Okay. Ooh. Hold on. 
Look how good that looks. Girl. Girl. Okay, and it says to cover. Wait. Let it rest for 15 minutes. Cover it with meat foil. <laughs> For okay, it's covered. Okay, I hate pork roast. Like I hate roast beef, anything. But like that kind of tastes. That kind of tastes good. You guys can kind of see what I am doing. Oh my lord. I'm going to make this gravy packet. Okay, I got my measuring tape. Think about back then, it was only 15 cents to go to a diner and just have a plate. And I'm, I'm assuming that's including like a drink too. Okay, so I'm mixing the gravy currently. I put the gravy, the, the powder in <laughs> the gravy. I put it on the saucepan just to heat up just a little bit. Okay. Now, we still gotta let the potatoes cook. Oh, so the, the timer went off for the meat to rest. It's still a little warm, so I'm gonna let it rest just a little bit. But I wanna, I wanna show y'all this meat. Girl, look how, I think, honestly, I think I did a pretty good job. Ooh, and it smells really good, low key. So yeah, the potatoes are still, they still cooking. Like I said, I hate roast beef. Like ever, all the times I've had it in my lifetime, I just never liked it. And my aunt, God bless her soul. She, she made like thousands and thousands of different styles of roast beef to try to get me to eat it. Cause her and my uncle really liked roast beef when I was living with her. And I just... I don't know, like, I just didn't like it, but, like, something about, and here's the thing, she seasons her food. People are like, oh, she probably didn't season it. No, it's just, like, the beef itself. 
I don't know what happened to this pot. The water from the potatoes fucked up my pot. Okay, so, well, where did I put that fork? So let's... Okay, so now we are just waiting for the potatoes to cook and then the onions to, I put the onions on a low heat. So, you know, like I said, it's, so it doesn't look like freak out. So we have the beef, it's all cut up. We have the potatoes, we have the gravy and we have the onions. That's what's going on right here. And then the beef she cut. That's all happening. I'm gonna read you some this little thing that says Kit's Kitchen. By the way, I'm dyslexic, so if if I'm if I'm reading too slow, I apologize and if I mess up, I saw I'm sorry. During the depression, many families took in boarders or paid guests. So like what we call a roommate, that's what they call them, like roommates or renters now as a way to earn money when Kit's father loses his job mother Kit's mom decides to take in water so the Kit Roots could still make their monthly mortgage payments the money they owe to the bank for their house boarders are paid by each week or month for a room and meals with the family Kit wasn't really happy about this that her house was crowded with strangers, but once her older brother Charlie explained that the Kitras could lose their home if the board is left, Kit was determined to make the best out of the new arrangement. That means doing her share of the chores, especially in the kitchen. Kit helped mother prepare and serve meals. She washed and dried and put away the dishes after breakfast and dinner, counting on the boarders Counting the boarders, there were 11 people living in the kitchen's house. Doing the dishes took a long time. To stretch their food budget, Kit's, plan, Kit's family planned large vegetable garden in the backyard. Kit weed and watered a garden. Mm, the potatoes are cooking. Where is it? Oh, garden. A lot more. I'm not going to read all of this, <laughs> but okay, I'm just not, I'm sorry, like there's just like two other pages, but here's what Kit's Kitchen looked like. This, when was this book written? 
This is before they gave her that blue kitchen. No, this had to be after. 2007. So, yeah, this was before the blue kitchen because 2008 is when the Kit movie came out. Anyways, so this is what Kit's kitchen looked like. Um, they didn't have much appliances as we do now. I'm going to, if you guys want to, like, read this for yourselves, here's the bio pick. Peeling potatoes was one sh a chore of kits. And then here's one of the pictures. Lovely. So that's kind of like, it's kind of interesting. For four, four million Americans, the Great Depression means not having enough money to eat. Because in the 1920s, everyone spent their money. Like, everyone spent their money. Everyone was buying stuff that they couldn't afford, buying cars, buying houses, buying luxury stuff. Because it was right after World War I, okay? This is right after World War I, 1920s. Everyone was buying stuff. It was so high fashion. It was very glamorous. As you can see from Claudie's collection, I haven't read too much about Claudie, but in her collection, it probably she probably specifies the like how people were just spending on their money. And then the depression hit. This is right before World War II. Like this got like the depression. Like we were in the depression. World War II got us out of the depression. Just keep that in mind. For millions of Americans, I I like how I'm giving like a history speech, like a history lecture. But for millions of Americans, like they didn't have like money, like they didn't have like, you know, money to be buying cars and food. Like it started, all those bills started to come back. They're like, oh, surprise, you all the bank this much money. And it's just like, I don't have that money, but you leased this car back in the twenties, but now we're coming back in the thirties. We want your, we want our money. You know, banks, if you worked for a bank at the time, you were collecting bank, okay? It talks about, um, in this book, about people starting gardens and other stuff. Growing up, we always had a garden. My my dad loved a garden. Um, my aunt, which is my dad's sister, she gardens. I always get, like, fresh tomatoes and, like, basil and all, like, other spices. But growing a garden... If you can, if you, I wish I can grow a garden. I don't have a balcony and I don't have the space to grow a garden because I have a, I live in an apartment building. But if you have a chance, I would grow a garden. You know, you could save some money on like produce, like tomatoes or like tomatoes, cucumbers, like stuff like that. That's where gardening became like a huge thing was in the 30s moving on into the, the 40s because they had the victory gardens in the 50s, you know, the 40s and 50s um, for the food for the soldiers. So gardening they became more of a thing in the 20s, in the, <laughs> the 20s, in the 30s, it became more of a thing, you know? Now kids, Aunt Millie taught her waste not, want not. Okay, so that's just a little history lecture. Cause like I noticed I haven't talked about it. I was I just been cooking. So that that's your history lecture. I love talking about history. These American Girl dolls made me like history, right? They they made me so interested in history. And Kit Kit was my favorite. She's still my favorite historical doll. And I just love learning about the Depression and. It's just amazing how like these people lived during this time. I don't have enough space. Oh no. Like there's not enough space in this casserole. We're gonna we're gonna make it work. We're gonna make it work. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, wait. I have an idea. I'm just gonna get a giant mixing bowl. Mix all this together. <laughs>
This actually looks really good. I don't know why. What? I know it doesn't say it, but I'm gonna add some stuff to it. So this is just parsley, just fresh parsley. I'm just going to garnish it. Love some cheese, so I'm gonna add some cheese. Now I'm going to set up my table here. It looks so good. Okay, I'm going to try it. I'm gonna get like a little bit of the potato if I can. The potato keeps like breaking down. Okay, let's try the meat. Let's just try the meat. I like that. <laughs> why is that real? Why is that good? Why is that good? I like that a lot. Wow. Mm. I think I like it because it has like cheese and parsley onto it. And like how I seasoned the meat was pretty good. This is good. I would give this a 10 out of 10. Here's the thing. I doctored it up though. I seasoned it. You gotta season your meat. All right. Like, I understand in the Great Depression, they only have salt and pepper, but it's 2022. Season your meat, all right? Would I make this again? Sure, I'll make it again. I think I cooked this perfect. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna lie. Hmm. Pretty much it. I'm gonna continue to eat my dinner here. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, Comment down below. I kinda wanna do more of these videos. Um. I'm gonna, maybe I'll do, make this into a series like Kit's cookbook and then I have Julie's cookbook. And then if you guys want me to do like a different historical doll, please let me know in the comments. Like this was like, this was kind of fun. Like, I'm gonna lie. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.